Oh man, doesn't this feel nostalgic? I'm going back to the stuff that actually made me a Xenoblade YouTuber in the first place. This is so weird. I like it though. As this is reviewing a patch of the game that talks about changes made to it, this will involve some amount of spoilers. The footage you see on screen is exclusively just going to be me running around early game areas with no spoiler related characters in the party. However, I might need to discuss things that might involve some sort of gameplay spoilers, and one of them is about a specific hero that was not directly shown off to any significant degree in any pre-release material. You have been warned. This is the first post-release patch for Xenoblade 3, and it seems like, at least just based on this, they're going with the exact same scheme that they went with for 2. 2 received a new patch roughly every 3-6 to six weeks until a little bit after the final piece of DLC content dropped. The patches were split up between 1.x.0 patches, which included major content releases, either for free or as part of the expansion pass, and 1.x.1 patches, which were exclusively bug fixes. The day one patch for both games was 1.1.0, which included the free items from both expansion passes, as well as some bug fixes, and the preceding patch for 2, which was roughly three weeks later, was 1.1.1, and despite the time gap being different, that is also what we've got now for 3. So this patch does not contain any new content, so we might have to wait a couple months more to get our chain attack music toggle, but it does include several bug fixes that are going to make basically everyone besides speedrunners and exploit enjoyers very happy. As always with Nintendo, the patch notes are just a series of bullet points, and while Xenoblade series ones have had a pretty good track record of actually being pretty informative, and I hope whoever writes these also works on Splatoon 3, because God knows that series needs better patch notes sometimes, but basically I'm just going to read each bullet point, then offer an explanation if one is needed, and my own thoughts if they are necessary. Point 1. Altered Powerwing Ryuho's behavior pattern. Made it undefeatable if player is in area that cannot be reached in the main scenario's intended progression. This is the only remotely negative thing in these entire patch notes, and that's because it removes a very, very cool sequence break. Ryuho, a bird, is one of the super bosses of this game and flies around a pretty wide area, but is inaccessible until you get to a pretty late game location. However, because of its original wide flying radius, it was actually targetable and attackable from very early on in the game, which meant that if you were on New Game Plus or did a lot of grinding, you could kill it way early on, which would then unlock its tombstone as a skip travel location, and since it's supposed to be from a late game area, that's where the tombstone is, which means you could skip to that late game area long before the story intended for you to go there. So basically they closed that sequence break, which is kind of unfortunate, and you will have to uninstall updates if you want to mess around with it again, but they didn't take out a bunch of other major exploits in this patch, so it seems like only story-breaking ones are big enough for them to remove. Next point, fixed a bug in Teach's Ascension Quest, Shadow of Enmity, where the first battle sometimes did not end. Straightforward bug fix that was getting in the way of people, and you would have to reset your game to get around it, so good change. Fixed an issue where the battle with the mysterious raider in the Severed Connection quest sometimes did not end. Literally the exact same thing, but for a different quest. Fixed a problem which the requested items Gogol Vuaga and Gogol Dalm for some Collectopedia cards were not available. Now, if you're an old enough fan of the series to have played Xenoblade 2 at launch, this should come as a revelation for you, because this is a bug that people found in the data mining, where basically enemy drop tables were misaligned, so that the enemies that were supposed to drop the Gogol Vuaga and Gogol Dalm accidentally pointed to the wrong spot on the Gogol drop table and dropped different Gogol related items instead. So you had some items getting dropped by multiple species of Gogol and some not dropped by any, which made completing Collectopedia cards that required those two items impossible. Now, yes, you can pay for some Collectopedia cards with Napon coins, but the one that requested Vuaga specifically could not be because it was from a Napon and those you have to get every item for. So this now makes that possible and now you can actually legitimately gather every single item you were intended to be able to get in the game without hacking anything. This is a revelation because Xenoblade 2 had something very similar to this, but in a much more drastic category of things that they never fixed throughout the entire lifetime of the game, where if you didn't know, your luck for pulling certain rare blades in the gotcha system is actually determined by a specific group your save file is put in at the beginning of the game, where, depending on what group you're in, different rare blades will have different rarities, and your pity blades, the three ones you can get just by opening a certain amount of core crystals, even if you don't pull a rare, is different. 
in the data for the game, there are five different categories with different odds and different pity blades. However, because of what seems to be a value duplication issue, group one is duplicated over group two, which means group three gets the group two values and so forth, so group five is completely unused in the game, and despite this being present at launch, it was never fixed over the over nine months of updates Xenoblade 2 got, whereas a sort of similar bug that doesn't affect something as big as the gotcha system was fixed in the first patch for three. If we actually get comprehensive bug fixes like this the entire lifetime of the game, this could easily be the most stable and functional Xeno game in the entire series. We did it! They finally learned how to program! I say this all in jest, of course, because game development is an extremely difficult thing to do, but honestly, the next bullet point on these patch notes isn't really helping their case, because it reads, Fixed a problem in which various effects were not occurring correctly for dishes other than baked spongy spud and sunny-style fish pie. Did you know that prior to this patch, basically all food effects did absolutely nothing? Because despite data mines, it took until like under two weeks ago for people to figure this out, and they did it brute force by just killing enemies with EXP food and without EXP food and seeing what happened. But yeah, cooking was basically a placebo intel now, so I sure hope you didn't do some big Napon coin farming sessions or ground out collectibles for all the cards that didn't involve the Gogol stuff or maxed out everyone's classes before now, because all of those are significantly faster now that Monolith learned how to actually make a game. Next bullet point. Fixed a bug that sometimes caused the talent arts button to disappear and not be able to be pressed during certain procedures. If this problem has already occurred, it will be fixed by loading the saved data after updating the software. This is a bug that I had not encountered myself, but I had seen people talk about, where basically you just couldn't use talent arts ever, so that's kind of a big deal. That definitely needed to be fixed. Next up, fixed a problem in which the text Verkaufen in the store menu was overlapping the adjacent text when language settings were set to German. This is easily the smallest thing in this entire patch. It's just one language having one instance of misaligned text, but the fact that they went out of their way to fix something like that this quickly is a good sign for the future of patches for this game and for the continued support they intend to give it through DLC. And then the last bullet point is the typical non-bullet point Nintendo loves to give of, in addition, we fixed several other things to make the game better. No indication of what any of that stuff is, probably minor bugs that are so small people likely weren't going to encounter them at all, or fixes for other things like misaligned or missing textures, or something like certain outfits on certain characters not being rigged completely correctly, which I think I'd heard stuff about both of those, so they might have fixed some of those things in the background, but realized it wasn't big enough to just straight up say. All in all, for a first patch, this is very good and very promising, so tune in next month when, I'm guessing, Patch 1.2.0 comes out, which will include the first piece of actual DLC content, and probably some other bug fixes, and hopefully more options. Give me that chain attack and menu music toggle. You know you want to, Monolith. See you then.